My name is Danica, and today I wanted to talk about Ragged Company by Richard Wagamese. One of the things I'd like to do this year is to make videos about my five-star reads of the year, because it's pretty rare that I would give a book five stars. Generally, for me, that is an incredible book, life-changing or really memorable, something that I absolutely love, and I want to be able to share those sort of books more. Also, I know book reviews aren't seen as popular on BookTube, but they're actually some of my most viewed videos over time. Time because people go back and look on YouTube for books that they've read that they've loved, they want to see other people's opinions, and even though those videos might not get a ton of views right away, they do have lasting value. So if you wanted to do reviews but you feel like no one will ever watch them, I would recommend giving it a shot. Maybe if it's a super obscure title it won't get a lot of views, but that's not to say it's not worth doing. You get a lot more engaged feedback on those videos. But also my most viewed video of all time is my series of unfortunate events review, so you never know what people are going to respond to. But mostly I want to make videos about these books because I want to talk about them and I also want to think about them a little more. If I'm going to rate a book five stars and say that it is amazing, then I want to be able to think about it a little bit and really process my own thoughts and feelings on it. So on to the review itself. This is a spoiler-free review, so if you haven't read it, that's okay. Ragged Company follows a group of four chronically homeless people, two of whom are indigenous and the author is also indigenous. As the weather gets colder, they start to go to movie theaters to have a place to stay warm, and they end up completely falling in love with movies, and also they win the lottery. That premise of a group of homeless people winning the lottery makes it sound like there's going to be a very strict divide between before and after. And that's not exactly what happens here. Obviously it does change things for them, but the book is very contemplative and character-based, and it has more to do with survivance than any grand fantasy of a lot of wealth. Survivance is a term used in indigenous studies, and I only learned about it once briefly in school, so I may be getting this completely wrong. But as I understand it, it's about indigenous survival as an ongoing process, both culturally and individually, as an active, vital way of being. The characters in Reggae Company have suffered. Part of the reason that they are chronically homeless is that they have been running from the past and the trauma that they had there. Just having to get by day to day meant they never stood still long enough for the past to catch up with them. But winning the lottery changes that, and when they start to be able to take their own health and safety as granted, the other things that they have been fighting to push down start to resurface and they have to deal with them. That's kind of the thing about healing, is that once you're in a safer place you might start to notice all of these things bubbling up that you might not have even realized were there, because you're finally in a place where you can actually look and deal with them. So we slowly get to learn about all of their pasts and how they ended up where they are, and it's brutal to read. These people have gone through tragedies. I will admit to full-on sobbing while I was reading at least once. But because these are things that mostly happened in the past, there's a little bit of narrative distance, which made it more readable than if they were happening in real time. But overall, this book has more to do with hope and friendship than it has to do with despair. Before winning the lottery, Amelia, Timber, Dick, and Digger had started to change their habits to be able to come together. Digger especially was was someone who was a loner by nature and really pushed back against the idea of being part of a group and relying on people again. But Amelia leads them to each other and they start to let each other in. And facing this new situation mostly brings them closer together, having to deal with this huge change of lifestyle at once. I keep thinking of Ragged Company as homegoing, and it's funny because when I read Homegoing by Ya Jesse, I didn't really think about the title. I obviously didn't get the title because it wasn't until I read this book that it popped into my head and I started really thinking about it. I feel like this book made me understand that book better, even though they don't have a ton in common. In Rag and Company, they seem to be circling back, and by sitting with the trauma that they've been running from for so long, they start to be able to move through it. Not over it, but through it. There's a line in the book where one of the characters says, you have to go home. You have to go home so you can finish your story, and that seems to be true for all of the characters. They have to go back so that they can move forward. The movement in this narrative isn't linear, it's spiraling. Despite the pain and the tragedy in this book, and it does get really dark, it reminded me of The Color Purple by Alice Walker in the way that it deals with 
tragedy and these really horrific things while still having this message of hope. It acknowledges that the world can deliver these horrific blows while still saying that it's worth living in it. It's also about the abundant potential of human connection. It's not just the group of the four of them that get closer, they start to gather more people into their lives that they wouldn't have met otherwise, and start to realize that reaching out to people that are really different from you can be hugely rewarding. Obviously, I love this book. It made me think, it made me cry, it felt like such a nourishing book. Whenever I encounter a book like this, I realize how shallow the interaction I have with most other books, and that's fine, not every book has to be life-changing, but it's really gratifying when you read a book that feels so deep and meaningful and that you really feel like you're fully engaged in. And I'm really grateful to have had that experience with this book. Let me know if you've read this one or if you're thinking of reading it. And if you have read it, definitely tell me what you thought about it. I would love to discuss this with other people. And thank you for watching.